everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of Visual Novel Creation with Dagger. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up and use my Visual Novel program. I am your host, DaggerTail100, and I have been writing and programming Visual Novels since 2010. And now I'm going to share with you my nine years of experience writing and creating Visual Novels so that you can also make your own Visual Novels. Now if you're a regular subscriber to me, this little intro should look very familiar. I put that at the start of every video because I like to give credit where credit is due. If it wasn't for this program, I wouldn't be sitting in front of this microphone teaching you how to do what I do. This program is called Novelty VN Maker. It's a free to use, free to download visual novel engine. And it's pretty good. Now it's been in beta since, oh, 2010. And it, you know, doesn't look like it's getting any updates. I hope this thing gets finished one day because it's a really good program. This is a program to get your foot into the door when it comes to programming visual novels. It's not the end all be all program and it's missing some features, but that's not what this thing is supposed to do. It's supposed to help you get involved in visual novel creation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you don't need any coding experience. That's right, you don't need to know anything about coding in order to use this thing. It's kind of a drag and drop style thing, so if you know how to use Microsoft PowerPoint, you can definitely use this thing. Now, you can use actual coding, but in my experience, like I said, this program is meant for people that don't know much about programming and just want to get started. Now, if you're not a fast learner, this is going to take some time to get used to everything, but with practice and patience, you can make all kinds of stuff. You, you just gotta keep with it. You know, just like anything, whether you're playing a game or trying to do a job, you know, the more you do it, the more you stick with it, the more you keep at it, the better you're gonna be. The heck, I've been using this thing for so long and I'm still learning new things about it. Now there's a particular way I'd like for you to watch these videos. I'd like for you to watch the video once to see how I'm doing things, but then I'd like for you to watch it a second time, but following along with me with the program itself. This is for any of you hands-on learners out there. I am one myself, so wanna help you guys out. Okay, so setting it up. It's very quick to install from the website. It's for Windows users and uses DirectX 9C. All Windows devices should have it right off the bat. And if not, just go to the official Microsoft uh, page and just download the plugins and install it. Now launching the program brings you to this nice dashboard. Oh yes, that is a nice dashboard right there. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, dang dagger, that is one fine, sweet looking dashboard. Okay, so here you got your preview window. your asset library, your action window and catalog, and the page side tab. Now everything you do appears on the preview window and you can fully interact with it. You can even interact with the entire screen itself, but just be aware that everything you do will show up in that box. If it's not in the box, it's not going to show up in your game. So make sure all your stuff is right there. Okay, now, first things first. We're going to set the resolution for our game. Yeah, that's right. We're being fancy today. What you're going to want to do is go to the Novel tab at the top. Click and go to Properties. Then click in General. And then choose whatever canvas size you want. I personally use 1024 by 600. But you can use any resolution that you'd like. Then you just apply it. Okay, now you see this little button right here? Yeah, yeah, this button way over there. Save. You will be clicking this thing a lot. Understand? You will be clicking on it a lot. Freaking save. Because anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And you can be like me who spends two hours working on a sequence and then... All of a sudden your computer has a hiccup and then the program crashes because of the hiccup and then you lost two hours of work and then you just want to propel yourself out of a window into the street. Y you don't want to propel yourself out of a window into the street. Trust me. I know. It's not fun. Now take a moment to look at your dashboard. You can resize it and adjust and move any of the pieces however you'd like. And now if by some chance you, you do a silly mistake like I do a lot where you accidentally click this X on any of the little tab windows down there. Oh uh, man, I just got rid of it. Well, 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 dang, how am I going to bring this back? What am I going to do? I got no tabs down there. Just head up to the top, click window, and then you check slash click whatever you removed by mistake. And if you can't remember the name of it, then you can just hit here 
restore default and boom there you go crisis averted but the number one advice i want to give you about this whole setup right here is to make sure it's organized to your standards because if everything is organized you're going to move a lot quicker and you're going to be very efficient all right now that setup is all done we're going to make our very first scene now to do that you're going to need some images because the visual novel without visuals is not a visual novel it's just novel and that's boring we want our novels to be visual it's like unicycle with a flat tire. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, I, I, I know, but uh, anyway. You can upload any image into this program, even GIFs. Now, all images should be in PNG format. I love PNG. PNG is great. Okay, so we're gonna need character images and we're gonna need backgrounds. Just as a side note for backgrounds, you don't need anything special done to touch them up, but, but if you really wanna give them some flair, your own personal touch to them, you can add your own special filters to that in another program, but we, we will get to that in another lesson. So characters have to be transparent. You don't want a white background behind them. Characters have to be transparent PNG. To remove that white background, you're gonna use, you're gonna have to use Photoshop or different websites like Pixlr to make your characters transparent. But if you're a gifted digital artist, then you got nothing to worry about with transparency because you know all about that stuff. Okay, so we're gonna go over to File, Import Assets, Images, Add Files, and then you click here to search for your images on your computer, and then you add them. Then finally, when you get the image or whole slew of images that you want, you just click Add to Library. Now, please be aware of this. The more images you put in, the longer it's going to take to load them in, and you have to have patience. Sometimes the program might freeze up, and you'll get a page not responding. But don't worry about it. It's just loading through everything. But if you're patient and give it some time, it'll import everything. Oh boy, I wish this thing was out of beta. Now you can rename any of the images if you so choose. So once all that's done, the images will now be in your asset library. So you gotta click to the left, then hit textures. Now your imports should be in the imported folder, ready to go. Pretty self-explanatory, right? All right, now that that's done, you're gonna wanna select your background image. So you just find it, then double click. See what I did there? That's the sound you make whenever you put something into the game. Just like that. Okay, everybody get out of your chairs and do it with me. All right, you ready? One, two, three. All right, good job. Depending on the image size, it may or may not fill the whole screen. You can manually adjust it yourself by left-clicking the sides here, and then you just gingerly drag it like that. Okay. There you go. And perfect. There you go. But we can do this quicker. So let's just control Z back. And now let's try right clicking the image. Okay. And edit and size to fit scene. All right, that was pretty quick. Now we're just gonna take care of the sides. There you go, save yourself a little bit of time. Now, if you wanna be extra precise by left clicking the sides here, you know, when you just drag it with your mouse, you can instead hit the arrow keys on your keyboard and that'll just inch it along until it's just where you want it. So we got our background, awesome. Now we need a character. Now same thing like you did with the background, just find your character. And then double click. And there you go. Oh, but Mion's a little small. That's all right, let's fix that up. Let's just enlarge her just a little bit. All right, there you go. I'm always a stickler for making sure everything's proportionate. So we got our character and we got our backgrounds, but now we need text. Okay, so you go over here. Now hit create new object, text object. Okay, now that'll bring up a little text area right there, but we need something to jazz this up a little bit more. So we're gonna add text box. So from the left, we wanna go to objects, sample text border. Now, you make sure you move the text over. Oh, well, that doesn't look right. And then we'll right click, and then we'll move it to the top. There you go. You always want to make sure your text is on top of your text box. Now, you see what I mean? If you know how to use PowerPoint, you know how to use this. This thing works with layers. Everything is on a layer. And you can check the layer on the story window at the top left. 
and then you click scene and there you go you see the positions of all of your images so if you don't want to keep right clicking images send to the back send to the far back send to the top all that stuff you just click here and then you can and then you can reposition it any way you want it saves you a lot of time and it saves you a headache now I'm going to save you some time. You can type in your text object right here. However, when you fully animate everything, what you type is not going to be animated through there. You got to do it in another way. You go to your action window at the bottom, click insert action, and then hit dialog paragraph. Okay, now you put that there. That's good. Now what the heck does it do? Well, if you attach your text object to the dialog paragraph, then everything you type in the dialog paragraph will appear in that text object. That sounds really weird when I say it, so... But here, let me show you what I mean. Then we're going to want to attach the text object to our paragraph. We right-click the text object, then hit Display Dialog Phrase. Now you click your dialog paragraph right there. And then you can write whatever you want. Um, how about uh, going to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches. There you go. Yeah, that's good enough, right? I said, ooh, that's going off screen. Ah, that's all right. We're just going to resize that. Okay. Now you see all those jumbled mess of letters? That's just an example of how much text will fit your object after you've resized it to your liking. So... Okay, all right, there we go. Now we're gonna wanna animate our text. Now what do I mean by that? Okay, now you wanna click the text object, go to the property inspector, and scroll down to font and animation. All right, now you choose whatever uh, animation style you want. You got typewriter, which makes it type out like a typewriter. Or you're gonna add these fades. I like simple fade, personally. Okay, and after that, we're just going to go over to the top left here. This is the preview button. Now you click on that. And there you go. Looks pretty nice, huh? Okay, now that was an aerial text font. Let's try uh, something else. Uh, how about uh, how about Chiller? Whoa, ooh, I like that. Uh, it's quite fitting since Higurashi is a horror story. You know, gonna go to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches and murder people. Anyway. Okay, so that's how you do your initial setup, and that's how you make a very basic scene. I think that's going to do it for today's lesson. I want to keep throwing a bunch of stuff at you. I think this is pretty good as, a, as your start. So for next episode, we're going to talk about scene dynamics and character interaction. Also, we're going to be talking about doing simple animation for those characters. Thank you guys very much for watching, and please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future lessons. I got many more coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson.